Welcome back. It's been a busy week in Washington. And to find out what the biggest stories were, let's bring two reporters working in our nation's capital, Aaron McPike, White House correspondent for the Independent Journal Review, and Philip Wegman, writer for the Washington Examiner. Okay, Aaron, what are your biggest stories leading with the number one of the week? Go. I first think that we have to talk about the retirement of Jeff Flake because no one was really expecting this. And I actually think that that puts Arizona into serious play. Democrats have a really good candidate there by the name of Kristen Sinema. They weren't expecting this. They have been looking at trying to make Arizona competitive over the, over the last couple of cycles, but it's never competitive until it is. That The same can be true of Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania in the presidential election for Republicans this past cycle. But, you, you know, that, this, this story has legs because it is going to be competitive for Democrats, but also because, obviously, Jeff Flake has been a very vocal figure in the Republican Party critical of President Trump. Yeah, vocal is one way to say it. I mean, do, do you think, uh, Philip, that, that, that Arizona's in play for the Democrats? What did Donald Trump win that state by? What, five, six points? Well, what I'm most interested in right now is that Steve Bannon got another scalp this week when Jeff Flake just called it quits early. And I think what this shows is that a lot of these guys, these Jim DeMitt conservatives who are kind of Heritage Foundation style, their brand just isn't working anymore. And so they're clocking out early. So what I think this shows is the populist nationalist side of the Republican Party, they're definitely on the upswing. That is true. And uh, I think the Kelly Ward is the uh, Bannon picked conservative upstart there so we'll see how she you, performs that is true but also this is going to go even further because a number of conservative groups came out against a, another republican candidate who could potentially run martha mcsally a congresswoman in arizona because they want to support kelly ward so you're going to see a nasty republican primary there in arizona so that's okay, just going to well, keep this going forward nasty is good for cable news is the nastier the uh, the higher the ratings so uh philip what do you think the biggest story of the week was I think hands down it's what we see coming out of the the Russian dossier. If you are Paul Manafort or if you are Michael Flynn, I would not want to be either of those guys tonight. <laughs> now that uh, Mueller has pressed charges with the grand jury, whoever is charged could find themselves arrested uh, come Monday morning. So this, I think, is going to be the dominant story going forward for all of next week. Right, and like I said at the top of the show, that's a CNN report about the Mueller indictments. Fox News has not not yet confirm that. If and when we do, we'll bring it to you. I mean, next week, if that is true and they put someone in handcuffs as soon as Monday, that's just going to blow everything out of the water. Um, all right, Aaron, what else do you think was big this week? I, I still think that that feud between Bob Corker and the president is a was a big story this week. Obviously, it dominated an, an entire day of news coverage. And while I don't think that it jeopardizes tax reform in the way that people are talking about, it is clearly going to continue the fight between the establishment and the, the, the populace and President Trump, like you were talking about at the beginning of the show. Well, I actually... I enjoyed the, the little kerfuffle because we got a new Trump nickname, Little Bob Corker, nice. <laughs> spelled L-I-D-D-L-E. Is that right, Philip? Yeah, well, Marco Rubio has to feel slighted. He was Little Marco. <laughs> that was his nickname. So no, that was Lil Marco. Like Lil Kim, Lil yeah, Marco. Yeah. He it's also is Sweaty Marco, straight. so I don't know <laughs> if he can fully accept that nickname. That was just gossip. I don't really think that's going to jeopardize the... Trump agenda in the Senate. Uh, if Corker doesn't vote for tax reform based right. on personal beef with the president, uh, he's really selling out his constituents. That's right. And, and, and look, there's one other big story that I think is really important that, that took up a, a lot of this week, which was Mark Halperin, who is an analyst for MSNBC and NBC, but lost that contract. He was political director of ABC News back in the 90s. And a number of women came out on the record tonight, but, but on background throughout the week. CNN reported that story, but the Washington Post has followed up. And you're seeing more and more women come out against Mark Halperin, and he's not only lost that MSNBC, NBC contract, but also a book deal and the option uh, for one of his books to get uh, an airing in a miniseries on HBO and Showtime as well uh, for another show that he had. So 
that story is a big deal because I, I do think it's not just Mark Halperin. We're going to see a number of other figures in the media and otherwise have more and more women come out against them. Now you're probably right about that. And he released a statement and copped to a lot of uh, misbehavior and, and rudeness and inappropriateness. So, I mean, if those allegations are true, I, I just feel terrible for, for those women that, uh, you know, were suffering that kind of abuse of power. Philip, uh, anything else big this week? Well, I think it's really easy to focus on a lot of the fights in Congress. And we, we saw a positive story coming out of the White House when President Trump was getting serious about the opioid epidemic. And he got serious about it in a really important way. He didn't prescribe some sort of, you know, magic elixir or say do X, Y, and Z and we're going to beat this thing. Instead, he went with an all of the above approach. And he also, in the most powerful moment, he talked about his own brother who he lost mm -hmm. to alcoholism. And I think this is so important because if you are that, that person in the Midwest, if you are someone who is addicted, the president is talking about his own brother's struggle. So shame is no longer an excuse not to go to your community and get help. And that's what's important because it's going to be communities, not government, that's going to solve this problem. That's exactly right. And uh, on Waters World, tomorrow night at 8 o'clock, I have on Eric Trump. And Eric talks about his father and, and how he was raised to say no to drugs, say no to alcohol, no to smoking. And it's very obviously a, an important and emotional uh, issue with the Trump family. Uh, Aaron, Phil, we're going to have you guys stay here. We're going to take a short break. But when we come back, we're going to have a preview of next week's biggest stories. So stay with us. Welcome back. We are rejoined by Aaron McPike and Philip Wegman for their predictions of the biggest stories next week. Let's start with you this time, Philip. What do you think is going to go down next week? I think this is going to be a little bit under notice, but it's incredibly important, and it is the Virginia governor's race. Ed Gillespie definitely has the momentum over Democrat Ralph Northam right now, and he's known for doing one thing that's breaking late in contests. And if he's able to pull this out and really turn on the afterburner in this last week before Election Day, not only does he have a chance to turn Virginia red, but Republicans have a chance to get some momentum before the 2018 midterms. Uh, it's a critical state. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's been a purple state. Hillary won it. Um, and I think Gillespie was closing so fast the last time was it for Senate and just came up an inch short because he didn't get any money that he should have yeah. gotten. Aaron, um, how do you see this going? You know, that's a great question because the polls have actually been all over the place on this. Uh, you know, I think we've seen a lot more of Ralph Northam than we have of Ed Gillespie, at least in terms of on television. But but that means that Ralph Northam is in uh, is in TV studios rather than meeting with voters. So I think that's a good point. And I think uh, it's obviously still more than a week away. It's not this coming Tuesday, but the Tuesday after. So I think we'll see it in two weeks be a big story. OK. And um, well, she took issue. <laughs> Philip, <laughs> with your uh, with your accuracy there, I don't, I'm not even going to you know make too much of it. We don't want you guys shouting at each other. Uh, all right, so Aaron, you're up. Uh, what do you think is going to happen next week? That's big. Well, Jesse, I will say that, that that we devised this list before that CNN report came out tonight that charges are going to be filed on Monday in the Mueller probe. As you've been saying, Fox News hasn't hasn't confirmed that just yet. But if that does happen on Monday, that will blow everything out of the water. The other big story, though, that I think that, that you're going to see a lot about next week is that President Trump, in true apprentice fashion, has been talking about the fact that he will be naming the next Fed chair sometime next week. He's obviously very excited about it. So that for him probably will be the biggest story. Yes, that will be so boring, that nomination, that will have no <laughs> chance of blowing the Mueller news, if it's true, out of the news cycle. Uh, Philip, um, the Fed chair, why should regular Americans care? Well, because this is the Federal Reserve. They are in charge of monetary policy. But look, uh, I think it's telling that in this media landscape that this is huge news normally, but I really think it will probably be overshadowed by what we see with the Russia uh, Russia probe moving forward. Uh, look, we're going to see what about is ad nauseum. People on the right are going to accuse Democrats of funding that dossier later on, and people on the left are going to respond that it was a conservative publication, the Free People 
Beacon, who originally funded it. This is a story that is going to dominate the news because if we've seen one thing in 2017, is that Russia hysteria drives headlines. It sure does. Um, any other scandals besides the Russia thing that you guys see percolating next week? Possibly this contract that was given to Whitefish, an energy company based in Montana, in Ryan Zinke, the Interior Secretary's hometown. You are seeing a number of news organizations start to look into that based on how the contract was written. And this company on Twitter got into a little bit of a spat with the San Juan mayor, uh, which seemed on both of their parts to be uh, not quite the thing to do when they actually are trying to bring electricity and energy and water and supplies to everyone in Puerto Rico. So that story just isn't going away. All right, so just so everybody knows, uh, Whitefish is, I guess, an energy company that's from the same hometown as the Interior Secretary, and they won a contract to, I guess, help Puerto Rico recover. It was a very pricey contract. What was the contract for? How many dollars? Uh, that I cannot tell you. I, I don't know the answer. To I, th I think it's dollars. like $300 million contract. <laughs> a lot of money. Um, and now, to be fair, Ryan Zinke, the Interior Secretary, had a very strong statement saying he had nothing to do with this company receiving the contract and it's he welcomes an investigation wants to turn over all documents it's just kind of a little bit of a coincidence we'll see how it breaks down any last thoughts well, I think what we're seeing here is that the administration, they're not going to make the same mistakes that they did with Tom Price and the private planes. They're saying right now we're going to get our story straight from the very beginning. We're going to control this narrative. We're going to push back early and make certain that it doesn't explode out of proportion. Okay. So let's just go back to this Mueller thing. and Let's just assume that there is an indictment that's handed down. Um, I'm just going to speculate because... You know, we don't know a lot right now. We haven't confirmed it. But if it does happen, um, is, is it a Manafort indictment? Is it a, a Flynn indictment? And do you guys believe that it's just a small kind of financial filing situation? Or is it the bigger collusion uh, situation that everybody's so worried about? Start with That's you, Aaron. Th that's the big question, right? But, you know, there is a lot of speculation going on on Twitter already, whether it's Flynn or Manafort. I, I, I would think that the, the, the scales are probably tipped to Manafort in this one. But, you know, remember, the FBI went and knocked on his door with all kinds of tactics and took him out of bed, and, and it was kind of a messy story. So you know, I, I would imagine that it's probably Manafort and that it there's probably a lot there. I mean, right. the story after story has come out about potential yeah. collusion This with does Manafort. not look good, but uh, we got to run. Aaron, Philip, thank you guys so much. Thanks for More Fox me. News tonight, right after this. in unfamiliar waters, hundreds of miles from base. All that training and discipline pay off. You find out what your team is really made of. The whole island! And these exotic waters, all thanks to rewards from my Navy Federal flagship credit.